I grew up in the Black Belt of Alabama. Now, if you've never heard of the Black Belt of Alabama, it's the historical agricultural center of the state of Alabama. And when I was a young man, our family raised corn. We didn't grow corn. That's what my grandfather taught me. We don't grow corn. We raise corn. And what he meant by raising corn was that we gave the proper care and attention to the crop that was needed in order for us to raise up a good crop from the soil. And that that same crop that raised up from the soil was a crop that would raise up the lives of the citizens and people all around us. When I tell you that the lessons that I've learned from my grandfather throughout my life were phenomenal, they were lessons that carried on through my relationships, through my friendships, through my marriage, and even down to my children. But there is one thing that I want to share with you about my grandfather and our job of raising up corn. You see, my grandfather understood that in the Black Belt, when you were raising up that corn, there were certain times that you didn't go in the cornfield. I didn't understand it as a kid, but I learned this lesson the hard way. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever been into a cornfield at night, But it's spooky and it's scary. Well, I have been. And I'm just going to tell you the quick story of how I got to that point. I was 14 years old. And I spent a lot of time with my grandparents because my parents just weren't doing right. My parents were alcoholics on a level that embarrassed my grandparents throughout the whole entire town. So I spent a significant amount of time with my grandparents. Fast forward 14 years old. I have some friends come over that day. We've been riding our bikes up and down the property through the roads that are cut through the cornfield. And one of my best friends, John, comes up with this idea that we're going to play hide and go seek in the cornfields at night. Now, mind you, my grandfather had told me hundreds of times, son, there's no reason for you to be out in the cornfields at night. The corn raises up on itself. All we do is take care of the soil. And there's always creepy crawlers and critters in the cornfield. Don't go out there at night. But this particular night, it's me and six of my friends, and we decide we're going to play hide and go seek. The cornfields were so big, we had to confine the area under which we would play hide and go seek. So we confined it to the left-hand side of the property, which was the left-hand side of the road that was cut through the middle of the property where we grew our corn. On the far left side of that corn was a wood line. And beyond that, we're just woods that led up to a small mountain ridge. So now that you understand the sun is going down, we start the process of playing hide and go seek. And it's my turn to go seek them out. So I walk into the cornfield, gently, step, listening, to see if I can hear anything. And the one thing I knew for a fact was that the darker it got, the spookier it got, the more chances that they would start moving and be ready to run. So I'm literally moving at a snail's pace, trying not to make a sound, listening carefully to see if anybody's breathing. When I start to hear one of my friends giggling, I hear him giggling, take off running in that direction, and me coming towards him startles him, so he starts to run, making a loop, turning back towards the road, and he was slow. And soon as we came, out of the cornfield onto the road, I gun him down and tag him. Now, the way we play hide and go seek is once you got caught, you now were seeking the rest of the people. So now the two of us go back into the cornfield looking for everybody else. Remember, it is six of us total that leaves four of us left. We progress through those cornfields until it's five against one. And when I tell you we are struggling to figure out where the hell John is, we have worked that entire left-hand side of the cornfield and we can't find him anywhere. So now we decide we're gonna call the game off and we telling him, hey, John, we quit, John. John, we quit, man, come on, let's go, it's over, it's done. We can't find you, you win. But there's no reply from John. Again, John, listen, it's over, you won, come out, you won. No reply from him. And so now we all head back up to the house and tell my grandfather that John is missing in the cornfield. And this look comes over my grandfather's face, unlike any look that I've ever seen in my life. It is a look of fear, worry, and concern that is unparalleled. 
he tells us to ride up to John's parents' house and get John's dad and tell him that his son is missing in the cornfields. So we get on the bicycles, ride up to John's house, knock on the door, ask for his dad, and tell him we were playing hide-and-go-seek in the cornfields and John is missing. And that same look of panic and fear comes across his dad's face. Now, mind you, my grandfather told me he didn't want us in the cornfields that night, that there were creepy critters, crawlers, things that would be there to get you. But he never explained to me exactly what the things were that would get you. That night, I was about to learn that there are things that will take you in those cornfields. Because 15 minutes later, there are 20 men with flashlights and guns going into my grandfather's cornfield and they're all looking for John. So the rest of us are trailing along behind them looking for him as well. I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this motion to you. You kind of remember in the Jurassic Park movies where the raptors were running through the weeds and bushes, how fast they move and the weeds and bushes would move and you would get a glimpse of them? Well, this thing that was out there in those cornfields, that's how it moved. It moved so fast that you got a quick glimpse of black fur as it shot through those corn stalks. And as the men spread out and lined up and walked through the cornfield, you can tell that they were pushing this thing further and further back into the cornfield. Imagine a scene, we're screaming John's name. John, where are you, John? Where are you, John? And at the same time, we're hearing this running and this noise as this thing is darting around in front of us. Nowhere to be found. I mean, nowhere at all to be found. And that's when the men start to work their way through the woods on the back side of the property and the far left side. I'm with my grandfather's working our way through the woods on the left hand side when I get a glimpse of something up in the tree. You know how it is when someone's walking with a flashlight, they take a step and the light bobbles up. Well, when the light bobbles up, I see what looks like John way up in the tree. And so I scream, Grandpa, Grandpa, I think John's up in the tree when he shines the light up there. Now listen to me. When he shines that light up into the tree, John is 30 feet up in the air and you can see he's literally pissing his pants there is urine dripping down from where he is and he just points in a direction now remember that i told you there were creepy crawly critters and things out there that get people in the night in the dark well this was the first time i saw what he called a creepy crawly critter and this wasn't no critter this thing looked like a malnutritioned wolf standing on its hind legs and its snout was crooked and it had its tongue hanging out of the side of its mouth. It looked like someone had been beating on it and mistreating it. And the craziest thing about it all was that it was standing there looking up at John. Later on, my grandfather explained to me that while we were looking for John, it had to be looking for him as well. Fast forward, we get John out of the tree and back home. Two days later, we're talking about what happened. John explains that as we were playing hide and go seek, he was laying on the ground and something grabbed him by his leg and started pulling him. When he turned, he saw that thing kicked it and threw dirt in its face and then took off running. When I explained to John, well, why didn't you scream or why didn't you make a noise? He said, I got dirt in its eyes it couldn't see. I didn't want it to know where I was going. And so John ran into the woods and climbed a tree. And that's where he had been ever since. The people here don't really talk much about what goes on. But I saw that same thing 17 more times before I made age 30. The exact same thing. 